What's going on guys and welcome back to episode 10, the final episode of my NHL 22 Fantasy Draft Franchise Mode series. Real quick, I just want to thank you all so much for the support on this series. It really means a lot to me. If you wouldn't mind leaving a thumbs up on this finale, I would appreciate it. Now, as you guys can see, in the preseason we're currently 4-0-2. McTavish is actually our leading scorer there, 11 points in 6 games. So, averaging almost 2 points a game. Kind of cool actually, I got to see him play for the first time ever in real life tonight. Uh, Spitfires vs. Hamilton. Spitz got the big win right there. You guys can see a picture um, him and Johnston actually going at it in the face-off circle. You can tell it's Johnston. McTavish, though, that is his number. You can maybe make out his face a bit. So, pretty cool, honestly, seeing that. Like, sometimes, I don't know, it's weird. Like, you have these guys in your franchise for so long that you see them in real life. It's just a bit weird to me. Anyways, guys, as you can see here, the team is looking stacked for this season. McTavish, Perfetti, Holtz on that first line get a plus five. Kamel, Doc, and Johnson on the second get a plus five as well. Saprikin, Volk, Mitchell there, and then Stamkos, Forster, Galvin. Even though we don't have any chemistry boost on the bottom six, it's still very solid. Defensively here, Edmonton, Fox, that top pair still getting a plus five. Hughes and Svitov on the second. Sloan and Obergauer on the bottom get a plus two. Very good defensively. Obergauer there, 90 awareness. Sloan, 87 with a 98 shot block. You kidding me? Uh, Goaltending wise, Walstead there, still an 88. Backman, 85 overall, backing him up. I think his name is pretty fitting. Power play wise, plus five on the first unit, and look at that. Every single player is a 90 plus. So with the boost, they're all 95 plus on that first power play. Like that's ridiculous. Uh, second unit there is a plus five. They're all like 87 plus, but Stammer's a 77. Still decent offensive stats though. I think he'll do fine there on the point in the power play. Uh, plus five with four mans. The PK there, plus three on the first, plus five on the second. Three man plus two plus one. So. Overall, I feel like the chemistry there looks really good. Should be competing for a Stanley Cup. We won three. Would love to win a fourth. Now look at the AHL team here. They're trying to win their eighth Calder Cup. Now we still have Pelche, Johnston, and Brisson on that first line with a plus two. Ryan is Pandolfo and Shields. Like the fact we have two eighty twos on the second line is ridiculous. Benson, Steele, Dunham, Conan, McMichael, Advocator. I mean, two eighty ones on the third line, eighty one McMichael on the fourth. Like just kind of crazy to me. Defensively, I was able to get it a little bit better. Minus one on the first pair now, post a minus two, but. Still not the greatest. The minus three on the bottom, I just can't get rid of. Goal tiny wise, Tarkus there starting 84 overall. Martindale backing him up to 75. Like, the fact that our starting goal in the HL is an 84, the team is just too good. Like, we definitely have to just do some super trade at the deadline to bring somebody in. And actually, guys, before I show you the ratings, I should show you what happened last year. Um, obviously, if we did not win the Stanley Cup, I would have showed you that. The Tampa Bay Lightning won it. We got beat out, though, by the Blackhawks, who. I uh, got beat by Tampa Bay in the Stanley Cup final. Now our AHL team, though, did win another Calder Cup. Oh my god, that's their seventh cup in nine years. I'm hoping they can win an eighth year because I think that would definitely be a record. I've never had an AHL team do that good. Like, that's just kind of stupid how good they've been. In terms of our ratings here, guys, we've got 97 offense, 100 defense, and 89 goaltending. So, we're looking like a good team here. Let's see if in the final season we can win one last Stanley Cup. And look at this, guys. Connor Corsor just got a $1.2 million offer sheet. I actually didn't realize he was unsigned, so that's kind of good. We'll add him to the AHL D core. Hopefully, that'll help our chemistry issue. Currently 8 and 3, so a good start to the season. And as you guys can see here, I've now got Corso on the bottom pair, which only gets a minus 2. So the defensive chemistry in the AHL is a little bit better, but still not great. And so suddenly in December, guys, we record a 25, 7, and 2, so we're playing quite well. Uh, first place in our division there are 52 points. Also first in the NHL, which kind of makes sense. AHL team also killing it 26, 6, and 3, but have some competition there. Moose and Palm Springs. Also look really good. Pandolfo, of all people, lean score there, 40-35. McTavish, 37-34 over a point per game. So, yeah, both teams are doing really well. All right, guys, so we're not the deadline here. And check out that record, 43-13-3. We're crushing it. Uh, currently 89 points, first in the NHL. The abs are looking pretty good, too, but not as good as us. AHL-wise, 51-9-3. They've already got 50 wins at the deadline, 105 points. Yeah, so they've just kind of taken away from the pack there. I mean, they have an 84 starting goalie. That alone is going to kind of help you out. Johnson, another big year for him, 70-63. Really disappointing he never grew enough to make the NHL team, but what are you going to do? McTavish there, 66-59. Kind of funny. So the leading score in the NHL and the leading score in the AHL, like I said, I just watched, you know, face off against each other tonight in the Spitfires game. What are the chances it works out like that? But we're getting to the trade deadline here, guys. I don't know what to do. Like, again, I'd like to make a giant blockbuster. Brad Lambert was always supposed to be on our team. We traded away the pick that got him. The value's not that high. That could make a lot of sense. Uh, Anton Lundell, Shabbat, Petrov, Barzell, Jacob Chikrin, Veselainen, Swayman, Ogren, Mantha, making 9.2. I think someone pointed out he was making like 13 last season. So, could go after Lambert. I know a lot of people are saying they wanted me to get Kaprizov. I could go look at him too, but I feel like 
going to be very tough to make that trade. Three subs on Edmonton here, 92 overall. Look at the value. It's not going to happen. But compare Lambert's value there, it's like a quarter, I'd say a third tops. Only two overall lower, like that's crazy. And again, meant to be on our team. You've got 13 goals, 43 assists right now. So 56 points, averaging almost two points a game. We traded him essentially for Nugent Hopkins. I'm going to try and bring him in here. I feel like we could put him third line center. That would actually be a really good spot. I'll move down that defensive specialist to the fourth line. I'm actually blanking on who our fourth line center is. Oh, it's Tyson Forster. So yeah, he's a fine player, but Lambert would be better. All right, guys, so we're now trying to get trade work for Lambert, and it's just not happening. I'm trying to retain 50%, but it basically bounces between Washington would be under the league minimum salary cap. As you can see there, they have $20 million in space, or they're saying we wouldn't have enough. So I'm trying to find like a sweet spot here, and it's just not giving me one. Doesn't look like uh, the Lambert trade's gonna work. Now, I know this goes through, guys. I'm trying to get this Cole Carson guy from Montreal. Franchise potential. He's got 59 points on the year. Really good all around player. Offering up Forster there, Johansson, mean league defenseman. Parks there's a mean league goalie. Already 70 overall at 21 as well, which is actually like really good for a goalie. The value's equal, but he's on the block. So yeah, trade rejected. I'm basically just kind of trying to find a really good player. Uh, to fit into our third line center. And look at this, guys. After Wallstedt, Tarkus, and Backman, we still have three more mean league goalies. I guess four if you count Martindale, but as you can see, he's kind of looking like a bust. I'm going to offer up Kondraktik right now, who's actually the worst of the three, along with a first-round pick this year. Hopefully, it's the 30th pick. And Tyson Forster there for Matt Barzell, is on the block. Actually going to keep our, you know, medium league defensive prospect. We still have three second-rounders. Honestly, maybe we'll be able to keep our first-round pick. What if we just trade them, like... Um, our second rounder here. Let's just play hardball for fun. Trades rejected. They probably saw me, you know, include the first round pick. They want it from us. Ooh, interesting. Okay, maybe we'll actually have to give up that good goalie here. So rather than Kondratik, we'll do Parks, who's honestly solid. 70 overall at 21 years old. Forster and a first for Barzell. 50% retained. Again, Barzell makes our team stupid good. Trade is rejected. Oh my. Okay. Um, I mean, I want him, obviously. I thought I was, you know, offering too much off the start. I'll throw in the pit second. I mean, they're getting me like goalie first and a second for rental. Trades accepted. Okay, so that is why we kind of, you know, added all those guys. We actually could make a trade with the Islanders, unlike the Capitals there for Lambert. And if you look at our picks here, guys, still have two seconds, two thirds, three fourths. Um, still have both of those, you know, me like defensive prospects, which is really nice. You don't have to give uh, Johansson or Hall up. We also have Dryden in the AHL. So, yeah, like, realistically, we... <laughs> Didn't give up really any of our, you know, best assets. And I'm just looking at our team right now, guys. Like, look how stupid this is. First off, Holt actually has more value than Fox now, which is kind of crazy. It's basically been Fox since the start. I mean, we got, what, six guys there, 90 plus. Doc as well, that's seven. And just look at all the medium lead players. Like, so, so many. Just kind of crazy. All right, guys, the trade deadline is now over. We actually made the last trade of the day, surprisingly. Like, the Barzell trade, I think we made before 11 a.m. A little bit further down there, you got Jake Neighbors going to Buffalo, Tobias Burnfoot to Montreal Canadiens, Connor Timmins to the Golden Knights, uh, Liam Wallen to the Golden Knights as well. Okay, so they're loading up a little bit. Nicholas Hegg to the Oilers, Jordan Spence to the Capitals, Anthony Sorelli to the Kraken, first and a second, geez. Samuel Girard to the Golden Knights, geez, the Golden Knights are getting so many players. Jake DeBrus to the Blackhawks, Noel Gunler there to the Leafs, Isaac Ratcliffe to the Wild, of course, horn player of ours, Rupe Hintz to the Seattle Kraken. Um, Alexander Texier to the Oilers, Zach Dean to Minnesota, and it looks like it. So, our trade for Barzell is definitely, like, the big trade of the deadline. And look at this, Atu Ratu is on waivers. We drafted him in the fantasy draft, 20 years old now, only a 79. So, yeah, he was a bust. I'm just going to decline. And so, after the trade deadline, guys, here's an updated look at the lines. I left the top six the same because if it's not broke, don't fix it. Third line here is so nasty now. So, Preakin, Barzell, Mitchell. So, Mitchell's the two-way guy. He's going to get into the corners for us. Barzell, of course, playmaker. He's got the speed. Zaprika in there. He's got the great shots. Fourth line, you got Stamkos, Volk, and Galvis. Volk, of course, is great defensive stats. Same with Galvis, too. So that looks really good. Defensively, no chain. And you can see i got Barzell in the second four-man. I've also got him in the second power play there. And surprisingly, he's actually playing PK for us. I mean, it makes sense when you look at his stats. 90D awareness, really fast, obviously. That's huge for getting the breakaways. Even got him in the three-man, too. So... Hopefully, you know, Barzell's a big player for us. Really going to help out that third line scoring, help out our special team. Again, I didn't really want to mess up the team too much, but I feel like going from Tyson Forrester to Matt Barzell was definitely a worthy upgrade. And we're now in the season here, guys. The record of 56, 18, and 8. So a solid season for sure. I am a little bit worried. After the trade deadline, we're pretty average. I think we went like 12 and 10 or something like that. Still, though, 120 points on the year. Like, we really cannot complain. Uh, looks like we won the President's Trophy, so not a bad way to end it. 
AHL team, 63-15-4, 130 points. They win the AHL regular season. I mean, both the teams just did so well. Mason McTavish there, 92 points, over a point per game. That's actually a record for the National Predators. How cool is that? Wyatt Johnston, 87. Love to see it. So uh, I'll see what everyone else did on this team. I think, you know, McTavish there. Play on the first line, Holtz and Perfetti definitely benefited him. Holtz there was a point per game, Perfetti just under at 80. Johnson 76, a big year for him, 54 assists. Fox 72 is a D-man on the plus 58. Kirby Doc 69, nice. Kamel there 64, Barzell 63. So we had what, eight guys there with 60 plus points. Edmonton almost 50, very solid for him. Saprikin also close to 50. Stammer 36, Hughes 36. Uh, I feel like overall, yeah, this team looked really good. Gold tuning wise, Wallstead had 50 wins, 0.916 to 2.42. That could be good enough to win the Vez, and we'll have to take a look after. Um, AHL wise, of course, Johnson led, Rasan 85, Pandolfo 74, Steele 72. Steele's on the third line, I think, so that's actually really impressive. Yeah, that many points with 13 minutes a night, geez. Uh, Ryan is both 62, McMichael 61 is a fourth liner. I think he did have power play time, but geez, that uh, is impressive. So yeah, this AHL team is just. 2-2 two, two good. Target fist there, stats, 0.913 at 2.1. Martindale, 0.924 and a 1.9. Even for a backup, to have less than two goals against, that is crazy. So, uh, take a look at the entire league next year. I feel like McTavish, 92, maybe on the first page, and he's not. Lucas Raymond actually wins the Art Ross Trophy, or tied there at the Brinkett, but he has more goals, so he thinks the tiebreaker. McDavid, Matthew Ward on Detroit, 88 overall. That's crazy. I don't think I've ever seen him grow that much. Also, 110 points is crazy for him, too. Peterson, Matthews, Meyer, Beta, McKinnon, most goals here. Line A, 57. Defensively here, Drysdale, 78 points. Fox is six behind with 32 better plus minus. So he might get the Norris. I guess we'll have to wait and see. Definitely has a chance, I think. Goalie stats here. So Walston had the most wins, which isn't really a surprise. And the best save percentage there for a starter was Spencer Knight with a point nine one seven. Walston was only point oh oh one behind him. So yeah, I think, you know, good chance of the Vesna here, goals against wise. Wallstead actually had the best for a starter. So yeah, I think in our final year, Wallstead's gonna be winning the Vesna. Rookie skater wise, land here on Boston, 67. I feel like, yeah, all these guys are just gonna be made up at this point. So I'll take a look at the standings. Really cool, you know, both these teams won the regular season. 120 points there. A lot of teams 100 plus. Um, oh my gosh, nine teams to be exact. Now the top six teams in the playoffs would you like to see? St. Louis there finished last in the NHL, 57 points. Goals for, we are second behind the Blackhawks. Goals against, are we winning the William Jennings Trophy? And we are with 205 goals against. Next closest team is Columbus with 230. So the defense showed up for sure. Um, obviously our AHL team we know just rocked it, 130. They also first goals for and against. They're first in goals for, averaging four a game. And they're also first in goals against. So yeah, uh, these two teams are insane. So hopefully we can get a good playoff sim here. Like. You never know. It's just all down to luck. Hopefully, like I said, uh, the EA gods are good to us. So we've got the Winnipeg Jets here in the first round, who's usually the team I think I send all of like our extra players to. Dylan Gunther's on that team. We traded him with Kachiri for Odin. I see that Gunther's up to a 91. So looks like he played even better on Winnipeg. Yeah, 91 points a couple seasons ago. He definitely kind of came alive on that team. I don't know why he wasn't growing like that for us. Lindholm first line center, Line A, just won the race for Shard. Mercer, Reinhardt, Olofsson. I mean, they got 78 Janot there on the third line. That's kind of good for us. Defensively, they got McAvoy, who's a 90. Goaltending, Nedeljevic there, 85. So, they've got some players for sure, but I do like our team better on paper. Let's see what happens here, guys. Just got to hope for the best. First two games, of course, at home. Going to have home ice advantage the entire playoffs. 4-2 win, 3-2 OT loss. Okay, so two pretty close games. 1-1, one 4-3 one. OT loss, and a 4-3 win. I mean... Both of our losses so far have been in OT. Like, we're in every single game. 5-1 win. Have to win one of the next two to move on. 3-2 OT loss. There's no way. Imagine we get knocked out in the first round without ever losing a game in regulation. Oh my goodness. 3-3. We're technically 3-0-3 in the first round. And we're down 2 nothing. Line A and Nimala, come on. 2-2. Two -two. Oh my goodness. Barzell and Stamkos. Let's go, team. We're going, oh, I was going to say we're going to OT. I didn't even see Barcel. The trade deadline acquisition wins it for us, the hero. That was way too close in the first round. Like, come on. Coming down to the third period of game seven. Ridiculous. We now actually have the avalanche here in round number two. Tavis was averaging a point per game for us in that first round, but 
Barzell is definitely the hero for that series. Now look at the Avalanche here. They got Kyle Connor, Connor Geeky, Mitch Marner on the first line. That's a nasty first. Erickson Eck, Jaeger, Bankston. It's a pretty sick second as well. I like how Bankston here has got the uh, quick draw zone ability, but he's on the wing. Like, that makes a lot of sense. Jaeger's got, yeah, one worse face-off stat and doesn't have the zone ability. How dumb. Uh, bottom six is pretty average. Defense is really average. 270s, best is 84. Goal tiny wise, look like Lekkanen is really good there, 87. But yeah, overall, their team is not that crazy. I think Winnipeg actually had a better team, but watch, this will be the team that beats us. So, first two games here at home, 5-3 loss and a 4-3 OT loss. I called it. I saw it coming. 5-4 OT loss. Wow. I can't believe this. Down 3 nothing. We could come back. We have to reverse sweep. Someone would correct me in the comments. I thought seven teams have done it. Only four teams have ever done it. Can we be the fifth? I mean, two of our three losses were in OT again. We've lost one game regulation through two rounds with, what is that, seven total losses? Like, that's ridiculous. 1-1. One, one. Cal Connor, Alex Holtz, the snipers. We're down 3-1. to one. Nick Paul, Brandon Yeager. Could be the last period of hockey for us here. Wow, 9-3. to three. They're going to do us like that in the final game. What a joke. We get beat by the Avalanche there in five, who I didn't think had that great of a team. Maybe I jinxed it, but wow, they sweep us too. I should mention uh, they sweep us. AHL team just swept the Texas Stars, so that is a good thing. We got the Henderson Silver Knights next. Someone did say if we win the Calder Cup, they won't actually see it. I feel like we're not winning the Stanley, so why not? One and one there. Uh, three to one now. This, I don't want to make sure. Yeah, conference finals. I know I sometimes mess that up. Beat Henderson there in five. So the AHL team's a juggernaut. We're 11 and two. And we got the Belleville Senators here in the Calder Cup final. Let's see what happens. Game one, down one. One, one. McMichael, the fourth line, two, two. Brisson, three to two. Wyatt Johnston, OT. Gotta love that. So... Up one nothing here in the Calder Cup final. Hopefully the HL team can at least win it. Again, eight Calder Cups in ten years. Like no team's ever been coming close to that. Uh, one nothing. Wyatt Johnson again. They tie it up. Three one though. Johnson again. Pandolfo. So Johnson's got three goals, four goals in two games. Uh, the leader of this team. I'm not actually sure if I've ever set the captaincy for the HL team. I think I just let it be like auto assigned. But Johnson definitely wears the C. Brisson wears an A, and I don't know who's wearing the other A, but. Up one nothing game three Dryden three to one Brisson speaking of them Renus there so potential sweep here in the Calder Cup final in Belleville we're fourteen two in the playoffs let's see what happens first period zero zero second oh wow I think I can safely just sim it yeah four one Justin again he just keeps going off but Belleville they're not going to get swept which is fine we want to win. At home in front of our, uh, you know, home fans there in Milwaukee. Here we go, guys. Game number five. Call the cup on the line. Up one. Dunham. Three to two. McMichael Shields. Resume simulation here. It looks like we're doubling their shots. It's just 36 to 18. And so with 11 seconds left. Wow, that was kind of really close. We're going to jump in here. Look at their team. They got a few guys with X factors, but you can see their guys are in the 70s, rare. Ours are in the 80s, and that's not even showing the rest of the guys. I think like. More than half the team's 80s. The ratings for both teams actually should pop up here in a second. I'm really curious. So, 86, 78, 80 for us. 72, 76, 72. Yeah, like, our AHL team is should be in another league. Like, what do we have? 14 higher offense, better defense, goaltending. Just not fair. And look at that. The first line's out. Brisson, Lundmark, Pelche. Okay, it showed 11 seconds left, but it's actually 30 now. Pelche's looking for another. All right, guys, they're pulling their goalie. 14 seconds to go. Need a big stop here from Tarnfist. Are you kidding me? Are you kidding me? Nine seconds left. They score the game tying goal. I want to jump in kind of and like win this, but I feel like people will get upset. Five seconds left. Johnston. Imagine Pelche just claps it there, wins the game regulation and the Calder Cup. Look at the stats 50 shots to 28. They tie the game with nine seconds left. Time and attack is in our favor. Not crazy though. Passing percentage, they're 62, basically, we're rounding up, we're 82, so, I don't, like, we're clearly the better team in all facets, the fact it was even just a one goal lead there is incredible, but, OT now, hopefully Wyatt Johnson there can get the uh, OT winner for us, that'd be pretty cool. Wow, and Belleville plays spoiler, 
on to game six. All right, guys, so here we go, game six. There we go, three nothing. Johnston again, Shields Dunham, three to one. Come on, I don't want this to go to game seven. We're actually equal shots this time. Johnston again, he's just having an unreal playoff. They answer back immediately though, with Rodney. 14 seconds to go now, third period again, guys. Call the cup on the line, Dunham there. That should be the insurance marker, 5-2 lead. Ablocator 6-2, yeah. This thing is over. Three and a half, two and a half, one and a half. Let's jump in and actually watch this Calder Cup celebration. Johnson on the puck here. Five seconds to go. And it looks like for the eighth time in ten years, the Milwaukee Admirals are Calder Cup champs. Absolute domination. I feel like the word dynasty doesn't do this team justice. Literally just ran this league. Like, the couple times we didn't win, I think, was more of a fluke than... Uh, us winning, that's just crazy. Now, I'm not sure who our captain is. Number 50, he looks 70. The dude literally looked like Santa there. Full head of gray hair, gray beard, what was that? And so there's no MVP cutscene, it's just the captain lifting the color cup. Like I was saying, oh, it's Dryden. Okay, so that's an interesting captain choice by the computer. I believe he's like a rookie defenseman. Okay, and right there, our goalie also has gray hair. We have like the oldest AHL team ever. And there you guys have it, the Milwaukee Admirals team pick. We've gotten used to this. It looked like some guys were literally holding up an entire hand for five fingers, probably five championships, but uh, you need two hands to hold up as many color cuts of this team as one. And look at this, guys. Playoffs are now complete. The Seattle Kraken are Stanley Cup champions, Calder Cup champions, and Milwaukee Admirals. I'm pretty sure Seattle finished last in NHL just two seasons ago, maybe three. That is crazy. Uh, to see that. Brendan Brisson there, 12 points, 19 games for the AHL team. I feel like guys are missing. Pretty positive Wyatt Johnson along with a bunch of others who they consider NHL players are missing. So doesn't really give us that accurate of a depiction. So AHL team, yeah, back on top there. Calder Cup champs. I mean, yeah, we probably, do we win like our division every single year? We won the regular season the last five years. I feel like we, yeah, absolutely dominate our division, but maybe I'm forgetting about a year or two. Individual rewards there, Tyrell, most points and MVP, Hamus, most goals, Fukufuji, best rookie, Tyrell, best defenseman. Oh wow, a defenseman? Led in points and was the MVP, that's kind of crazy. And Gilroy, best goalie, Johnston, MVP of the playoffs, so I was right, he did win that, I mean, it was just going off. Hamus there, sportsmanship, Rolston, community involvement, Tarnkfist, lowest goals against. Now, looking at the NHL teams, again, surprised to see Seattle crack in there. Win the Stanley Cup. We get our second presence trophy, I believe. Individual awards here. Raymond Art Ross and the Hearts. Fox there. Did get the James Norris. Let's go. His second, I believe. Ward got Lady Bang. That's kind of cool. It's like a random player to grow like that. The Land Calder. Erickson Con Smythe. Wallstead did get the Vesna. Love seeing that. Along with, of course, William Jennings. Samurakov, the Masterton. Avs coach Jack Adams. Richardson there. Selkie. Raymond Ted Lindsay. And the Richard Shard there went to Line A. So, a uh, pretty cool final year. It does suck that stacked NHL team got swept in the second round, but what are you going to do, I guess? You know, there's really only so much we can control, and yeah, I was right. So Johnson looks to be in the NHL now. I am curious just to see how much did he carry that, that team in the playoffs. Wow, 23 points, 19 games, 11 goals there, yeah. Dude carried for sure. It's actually never made in the NHL, but what are you going to do? You can see there, tons of guys coming up, Handolfo. Rinus. We had a couple of medium league defensemen still. Like, this team could have kept going. But I feel like after 10 years, franchise isn't quite as cool when there's more creative players than real players at that point. So, NHL head coach here. His stats for the entire franchise three Stanley Cups, two Presidents Trophies. I was hoping for five Stanley Cups. If you add the Presidents Trophies to the Stanley Cups, you get five. So, uh, that's pretty close, I guess. Now, the AHL, of course, like I said, just unfair. Eight Calder Cups. I wish it would actually show, like, how many times you won the AHL, because. I think we did that more than eight times, I want to say, so pretty ridiculous. 600 wins on the dot, 170 losses there for the AHL coach, yeah, absolute domination. I guess the last thing I want to show you guys here is just the record book. As I do know, this team set a few more records, so if you look at all-time Predators, Alexander Holtz now holds the record for points, 688. He also has the record for goals, 301. Adam Fox, though, assists there with 524. Looking at the season records here. Jack Quinn still has the most goals there with 41. McTavish, though, took out Korea there for points, 92. Also assists, 65. Wallstedt just set the record for wins there, 46. Also McTavish, of course, just put up those records. Uh, rookie, Kent Johnson, most assists. Quinn, most goals. 
Johnson most points in a game. Adam Fox six assists this or sorry last year, and then Malkin 2022 most points was six. So Fox must have had six assists, no goals that game. Very very cool. Now we could look at the entire NHL here just to see what happened. Joe Thornton had the most games played. Crosby finished fourth. Ob fifth. Uh, Mark Andre Fleury for goalies had most games played. Ovechkin there, yeah, 11-01, crushed Gretzky's goal record. Points, though, uh, Crossy was still 800 behind Gretzky. Assists, yeah, 700 behind him. Joe Thornton, though, fifth. Wins, Martin Redeur, uh, I think Carey Price there ended up being fourth, Fleury second. Shutouts, Fleury's fourth on that list. 50 goal seasons, you can see Ovechkin's first with 11, but no other new players. 100 point seasons, McDavid finished three behind Gretzky. He's got 12, and he's still playing. So we actually could tie Gretzky. We'll be there at 8th, tie with Marcel Dion. So pretty cool to see those records. But that's where we're going to end the episode and the series, guys. Again, thank you so much for all the support on this one. Actually, I do want to do one thing. I want to sim to retired players. I want to see if the captain, Steven Stamkos, retires in our final year. Because that would be kind of crazy. Pretty fitting, I think. Wow. How perfect is that? At the top of the list, Steven Stamkos, after 10 seasons with us, he knows I'm stepping down as the GM. He also decides to step down and retire. Some pretty good company there. Hoover Doe, Miller, Landeskog, Shen, Nuge. But there you have it, guys. Again, thank you so much for the support on this one. As always, if you did enjoy it, leave that thumbs up. If you haven't subscribed yet, hit the sub button down below. And I'm sure some of you are wondering which team I'm going to use for the next franchise mode. I've actually already decided, but not going to tell you yet. I want it to be a surprise, so stay tuned for that. And as always, guys, thank you so much for watching. Have a nice day. Goodbye.